Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes, tamu sana. For the better part of today and also yesterday, William Ruto has been touring some parts of Migori County and also Homabay County. And in those rallies, Migori Governor Okoth Obado seems to be the weakest link in William Ruto's tours in those counties. I want you to have a look at these short clips. What transpired when Okoth Obado was given the podium or a chance to speak? I want you to have a look at what happened. After which, as usual, we are going to dissect that and see exactly what it means politically. So if in case you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Give it a like. Thank you. God bless you. Have a look at these clips. <laughs> Kasi ni kasi Basi tukiunganisha hisi vitu viwili Mimi na amini ya kwamba tutafaulu So leo hii Asikiseni Amuja nipata Tuko pamaja, tuko kitu kimoja So ni nasema ni ye Ni nasema ni ye Basi, basi. Nimesikia. Mimi nasikia maneno mara moja. Iniwe baba bwana. Ah. Okay. Ini jangu From those clips, you can see that when Okoto Bado was given the chance to speak in Homer Bay County, residents were not happy with him. And in fact, they were shouting and reminding him of Sharon, the late Sharon Otieno. And then again in Migori County, Okoto Bado's home county, residents there were also not happy and they just shouted down Okoto Bado. Yes. So, what does that mean politically? Or what can we draw or learn from Okoto Bado's heckling, but William Ruto is not being heckled? What can we learn from that? There are five things, ladies and gentlemen, that comes out very, very clearly from those incidences. And that's going to form the basis of our analysis. The first thing that comes out clearly is that Nyanza residents are not impressed with Okoth Obado's political direction. You know, largely, if not 100% of the Luo Nyanza, let me just put it, a good majority of residents of Luo Nyanza identify with ODM party. And it will, it will take some time, maybe for those residents, to change their mind. So by heckling Okoth Obado, we saw him being heckled in Migori County, where is the governor? And we also saw him being heckled in the neighboring county of Omabe. That's just an indication that residents of Nyanza, Luo Nyanza, are not happy with the political direction Okoto Bado has taken. Okoto Bado seems to be aligning himself to Uda, while a majority of residents there align themselves with ODM. So people there are not just happy with this political direction. And then secondly, residents of Nyanza do not agree with Ruto's message. And they are showing that through heckling of Okoto Bado. Heckling of Okoto Bado is just one way residents of Luo Nyanza are just trying 
to show their disapproval of William Ruto. Because, you know, I tend to believe that maybe they don't want to send a bad picture that they are heckling William Ruto. So instead of heckling William Ruto, they want to heckle Okoto Bado, maybe to send a clear picture that they are not interested in William Ruto's message, or actually they don't agree with, with William Ruto's message. That's just, they are just sending a, an indirect message to William Ruto that they are not in agreement with what he's trying to sell there. And then thirdly, it would be more beneficial to Ruto to tag along leaders who are deemed to be credible. Because again, Kenyans have not forgotten about Sharon Otieno's case, or rather the murder case. And when I'm talking right now, the case is still in court. So tagging along such kind of a person in your rallies is bound to raise some suspicion and cause some problems. Because just yesterday, William Ruto was in Homabi. And largely the people of Homabi, they see Okotho Bado as somebody who probably murdered their daughter or killed their daughter. So if you take, tag along such kind of a person in your rallies in that area, then most likely, instead of gaining votes in that area, you might end up losing votes in that area because you are going to be considered as an apprentice of somebody who killed their daughter. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, I tend to believe that William Ruto, for his rallies to be also successful in Nyanza, maybe to be successful without any kind of heckling, maybe he should tag the right kind of people in some of those his rallies and tours. Let him tag people who are respected and deemed to be men and women of integrity, not people who have got some very, very <laughs> bad cases hanging loose around their necks. And then fourthly, besides that, besides William Ruto tagging the right people, I tend to believe also that largely the Luo nation is trying to put Okot Obado's image into question, or rather they are putting his integrity into question. By heckling him, they are just trying to tell him that as an individual and as a person, they don't agree with him. Mm. They have issues with his image and integrity. That's also one way or a clever way the residents are just trying to disapprove of Okoth Obado's integrity. Yes, because of the late Sharon murder and also the kind of corruption cases that are really facing Okoth Obado as far as Migori County is concerned. And then fifthly, Ruto is shooting in the dark. He is not calculative in his campaigns. I tend to believe, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen presidents before being elected in Kenya. Mm. And we have seen how they do their campaigns. A good candidate, you largely <laughs> focus on the areas you know you can get some high kind of potential. You don't just go shooting in the dark. Mm. By William Ruto wasting a lot of resources in Nyanza, I tend to believe he's not being calculative. Mm. He's not putting his money where he should be putting it. Mm. Because instead of William Ruto wasting a lot of money in Luo Nyanza, mm. trying maybe to show that he's a man, I think he's not really being calculative in this case. I tend to believe that even before William Ruto wastes his resources in Luo Nyanza, he should first of all consolidate his Rift Valley backyard. Because in Rift Valley, as I talk, if you look at the pocket vote, a good portion of the pockets do not actually identify with William Ruto. And also Elgeo Maraquet governor, Alex Tolbos, has ditched William Ruto for Raila Molokodina. We have the Baringo Senator Gideon Moy, we have Baringo women representative and a host of other very, very strong leaders in Rift Valley. So instead of William Ruto wasting his resources in Luo Nyanza, I tend to believe he should first consolidate his support base very well of the Kalenji nation fully behind him. 
after consolidating that support, he can now then reach out to other areas. Because by reaching out to other areas and leaving his support base exposed, he might just, in the long run, end up even losing this support base that he thinks he has. So in my considered opinion, William Ruto should put his money where it's worth. Mm. He should first of all consolidate mm. his support base before he goes out to those other areas. I tend to believe, ladies and gentlemen, that these are the reasons why I believe that Okoth Obado might be the weakest link in William Ruto's forays in Luonyanza. And I won't be wrong again to state that it's Okoth Obado who is actually spoiling the party mm, for William Ruto in Nyanza. Because also again, if you listen to the way Okoth Obado is talking, it's somehow annoying to Raila supporters. It becomes very annoying. Okoth Obado is not coming as a politician who has got that, that nice tongue. Mm. I don't know, he's somehow talking in a way that can easily infuriate, infuriate people. So, Okoth Obado, in my considered opinion, is the weakest link in William Ruto's forays in Nyanzane, in Luo Nyanza, and largely, William Ruto has to rethink his strategy again, maybe any time he's going back to Nyanza. We should identify people who have the language eh, to appease the masses. I tend to believe that's what we can read and learn from all that trips of Ruto in Luo Nyanza. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, just as I did indicate when we were starting, if you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. If you are watching us for the very first time and you are watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Drop a comment, please. And to our fans and subscribers here, God bless you. God bless Kenya. Tamu sana. Tamu sana. Tamu sana.